Hi. I'm going to demonstrate what we can do if we happen to lose a node unexpectedly. This node is lost and is never to return to our environment. We currently have four nodes in our environment, um, all running Rack, and we have some database instances spread across based on uh, previous videos. Node 2 is going to be our victim. What I'm going to do is simulate the spilling of one of these into the node. Of course, these are all running in virtual machines, so it's just a matter of powering one of these suckers off. So, target victim will be node 2. I've already connected to 1, 3, and 4, and we're ready to go. First thing I'm going to do is watch my logs on the surviving nodes. Now, of course, in this case, we're kind of cheating. We know which node's going to die, but the whole point is to show you, you know, what things look like when a node unexpectedly goes. So this is actually quite interesting. So uh, firstly, you need to know where the logs are. Okay, and again, we have sort of a, an alert file. Now, there's actually a few subdirectories underneath here, such as OCSSD, which could also be very interesting to watch. But um, the traces are rather verbose, and uh, for the purposes of video, we're not going to go nuts on this. Um, okay, so it looks like CTSS is actually functioning. That's a new feature of 10GR2. Oops, of course, this is not another node. Here I am trying to save time. All right, um, not var. It's a bit of my sysadmin popping out there. Uh, log. So again, um, alert. Okay. Now, I'm going to spill the drink. So node two is about to go poof. And it's gone. <laughs> so, as you can see, it takes a little bit of time for us to detect that the node is gone. Um, we'll be losing a few heartbeats here and there, and there you go. So you can see that uh, node 4 is already starting to complain. We've missed 50% of timeout interval. And now we're down to that. And node 2 sorry, node 1, 3, and 4 are all complaining, and now they have chosen to evict node 2. Okay, now this is not such a big deal, right? Because uh, this is the whole point of rack, isn't it? So, we've got our scan. Um, maybe if one of the three listeners was running on VXA2, it will have moved over to another VXA or to another node. Um, these are all things I'll talk about in other videos. Right now, um, we want to focus on what to do to clean up our environment as if Node 2 will never come back. Okay, so the assumption is that Node 2 is completely dead. Uh, we don't have any backups and we have no budget to buy a replacement and move the disks over or whatever. Okay, so it's gone. Um, so you can see everything's kind of back to normal, right? Obviously, we've lost one instance of, uh, of database A, and actually, we didn't have an instance of database B running on uh, node 2, so database B is unaffected in this case. Aside from the fact that there may be additional load on node 3 and 1 as a result of uh, failovers and whatnot of our sessions. Okay, so now we want to clean things up. Well, obviously, we cannot go to node 2 to clean things up from there. So we can just take one of our surviving nodes. I'm just going to go to node 1 just because it's number 1. And first thing we want to do is first, well, let's just say you've walked into this environment and uh, you're not actually familiar with it. And this is a pretty common scenario for uh, a consultant, for instance. And uh, first we want to enumerate our nodes. We want to find out what our nodes are and which ones are pinned or unpinned. Right now, none of them are pinned. Okay, so we won't need to worry about that for now. Okay, now what we need to do is um, actually we need to be root for most of this. So let's just take a look at what happens if we try to unpin, sorry, delete a node. Now notice that we have the syntax now: CRSCTL delete node and the name of the node. Pretty straightforward. Okay, now in this case we're able to do this as Oracle. Okay, now let's go into app. Uh, OUI bin, OK, 
Okay, so just go into your home, your grid home, OUI bin, and in here you'll notice there's a whole bunch of scripts that make it easy for you to run run installer. Okay, now run installer is actually what we're interested in, and all we want to do is clean up the homes, sorry, the inventories of all of our surviving nodes so that they no longer refer to um, our dead node. Uh, oops, VXA1, VXA3, VXA4. This is what happens when you try to do this with instant message on the side. Um, all right, so what this does is uh, updates the node list, as it kind of implies, on all the surviving nodes uh, so that they no longer, the inventories no longer point to an installation on node 2. So now when you do your O patches and whatnot, um, and you, let's say you want to do a rolling patch or something like that, um, and let's say you have O patch automatically do this instead of using dash local, uh, it won't attempt to go to node 2. Now I don't know what else to say. Um, there's one more piece we need to take care of, isn't there? Our database, DBA, database A, had an instance living on, uh, living on node 2. Okay, so now of course we need to take care of that. Okay, so we've taken care of clusterware now. All right, so let's take a look at uh, the damage we've done. Well, hopefully there's no damage. Take a look at CRS stat. You can see there's still a bunch of applications that need to be removed. Okay, but the node is gone. All right, so now if I do an OLS nodes, OLS, oops, of course I have to be in the right bin. OLS nodes, uh, let's say dash N, that node is gone. Okay, and then the removal of these applications is actually pretty easy. Um, I'll show a trick for that in a second. All right, so. Uh, Next thing we want to do is remove the existence of instance 2, not node 2, but instance 2 in database A. And it certainly is taking its time. Uh, keeping in mind that this is all in VMware. Of course, I should be uh, breathing a little better right now because I'm now down to three nodes. So now what we want to do is not create or delete. It's not what you want to do. Deleting a database would actually drop database A. Okay, we want to just take care of that one instance that's now missing. So we go to instance management, and this time we go to delete an instance. Now, obviously this instance is down, and it's never coming back. Okay, somebody spilled Coke into the node, and it's, it's gone. So the database that we want to take care of is DBA. Oops. And we provide it. Now what we're doing is we're contacting the existing the, 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 the existing instances and also attempting to contact, uh, well actually right now, just the other two instances to determine their status. Okay, And you can see the status. We wanted to sele we selected that guy, that's the one we want to remove. We we'll click finish and it says, hey, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. And it will delete the Oracle instance and its associated OFA directory structure. Um, so we say OK on this, and we're probably going to get some errors, at least with 11GR1 uh, we did. So we'll find out. There we go. So node VXA2 is not accessible. DBCA may not be able to remove all files for the instance. Well, that's fine. Those files resided on node 2, and node 2 is poof. So we say continue. So Enterprise Manager, invalid node specified VXA2. OK, we're getting some errors. No problem, we just say okay. No problem. Right, it's trying to do maintenance on node 2, which of course no longer exists. Do I want to perform another operation? No thanks. And that's it, we're done. Thank you for watching.